The average person attempts to dress themselves on a reasonable budget, searching for bargains at mainstream retailers. Others attempt to recycle textiles and buy their clothes secondhand at thrift stores. But for the ultra-rich, clothing is a sign of status, and luxury brands are an essential way to express wealth. From French designers to Italian imprints, Guccio Gucci, founder of the Gucci brand, was the son of a leather worker in Florence. His family was extremely impoverished and struggled to cover even the most basic expenses. Gucci respected his father, but vowed never to live in the same squalor. As soon as he was able, he started taking odd jobs and moved all across Europe, searching for a better life. In Paris and London, he took night classes and tried to ingratiate himself into the high fashion world. And though it took decades, he finally succeeded in capitalizing on his newfound skills. In the end, he used the same leatherworking abilities that his father taught him as a child, but aimed his products at a wealthier audience and eventually created a company that is currently valued at $12.7 billion. The history of Gucci is fraught with intrigue and crime. If Guccio Gucci was the godfather of his fashion empire, then he passed that title on to his son Rodolfo, and then his grandson, Maurizio Gucci. Maurizio was well-liked and ran the business competently, but many have mentioned that it was almost impossible to do business in Italy without dealing with the Mafia. The Gucci family was no exception. They interacted with the mob regularly and kept the community in harmony. Though the company claims they are law-abiding these days, it's unclear if they still have ties to organized crime. Thierry Hermes started this family business in 1837. Long before the famous scarves and Birkin bags, Hermes was a harness maker who provided gear for the houses of royals throughout Europe. His grandson Emile Maurice modernized the family business. He brought in his friends Louis Renault and Ettore Bugatti to make trunks for cars. Emile Maurice also diversified the company into furniture, belts, and couture. But it is Jean-Louis Dumas, a descendant of Thierry Hermes, that is credited with turning Hermes into a global giant in luxury fashion. Though LVMH attempted to take over Hermes in 2011, it has stayed autonomous. The brand has also succeeded in expanding into the Chinese market, which has a ravenous appetite for luxury goods. Hermes is comfortably the second most valuable luxury brand in the world, with an astonishing value of $19.2 billion. The French company makes more than $6 billion every year and is leading the race in expansion into the Chinese market, meaning it stands to grow immensely in the coming years. Louis Vuitton is debatably the most classic clothing brand in the world. It has been a staple of celebrity fashion for more than a century, with patrons ranging from Audrey Hepburn to the Empress of France. The company was founded by its namesake, Louis Vuitton, in 1854, and has quickly grown to one of the biggest brands on earth. The company operates in 50 countries, with more than 460 stores worldwide. Their bags are consistently sold for thousands of dollars apiece. Despite this prohibitive price, they have numerous customers, because the company has a valuation of $28.4 billion, making it the 15th most valuable brand in the world, and the most valuable fashion brand in the world. In truth, Louis Vuitton is just the core brand of fashion kingpin LVMH. The CEO of this parent company, Bernard Arnault, recently overtook Bill Gates to become the second wealthiest man on earth. However, it's worth noting that unlike Bill Gates, Arnault has not committed to donating his fortune within his lifetime. In fact, he is not renowned for philanthropy, and has been criticized for Louis Vuitton's practice of burning unused merchandise to create scarcity. Regardless, he sits at the helm of the most valuable luxury style brand in the world.